Hi, and welcome to video 6.6, .6, where we take a look at neural art style transfer, which is a very cool concept that you'll see shortly. So firstly, what is it exactly? Well, before we take a look at some example images, I'll talk about the original paper published in 2015, a paper that went viral because it allowed us to apply the artistic style of another image onto our image. So you can take a painting, like say Vincent van Gogh's Starry Night, and apply that style, that his unique artistic style in that image to one of our images, it's our phone camera images or whatever, and get some very cool artistic pieces out of it. So let's take a look at some examples here. This is a picture of me, and this is the artistic style it applied to the image, and this is the output, so this is awesome. This is a picture I took of the Eiffel Tower, applying the neural style transfer from Vincent van Gogh's Starry Night. And this is another one here, uh, just a generic selfie of my wife and I, applying this artist's painting here to it, and look at the cool output we get. So we're going to do all of this in Python shortly, but before, let me explain the concept of what's happening here. The magic in neural art style transfer isn't in the architecture or the lengthy training process, but it is in with our special loss functions, which we'll describe shortly. So before we get into that, remember, you can visualize what convolutional layers learn. This is, imagine, this is the lower layers here. They learn just little patterns and small details like this. Then as you go to the mid layers, you can see more defined patterns as we go. And then the higher layers actually learn a lot more complex patterns. And as you can see, it's a face here. And this is like pieces of nose, eye. And these were just like edges and little blobs of all patterns and colors there. So what does this mean? It effectively means that convolutional layers store details about the image or the training set that it works on. So basically, you've seen that a convolutional neural network in the weights stores some sort of information about the image or about the training data set that it was trained on. So given that, is it possible we can use this knowledge that is stored within a convolutional neural net, a trained CNN, to apply some sort of metric or some sort of hierarchy of knowledge stored in that network or that model to another image. And that is the, basically the key basis of neural style transfer. Okay, so now let's take a look at a high level view of the process whereby how we make or how we enable neural style transfer. So firstly, imagine we start with a blank image of random pixel values. And then what we do, we keep changing those pixel values as to optimize a cost function so that, but we keep our pre-trained CNN weights constant. Remember, we want to preserve the content of the original image while adopting the style of the reference image. The reference image being, say, Vincent van Gogh's painting, and our original image will be the selfie that, say, you have that you want to apply this style to. So let's take a look at the cost functions that I mentioned that we are trying to optimize, okay? These are two cost functions. Well, they consist of two parts, essentially. There's the content loss and the style loss. So let's take a look at the content loss. So remember how our filters learned special decompositions of an image. Remember those high level and low level features we talked about? Now you can assume that the high level features of the convolutional layers, that's the top layers of a CNN, store the global representation of the image. Remember, let's go back to it. You can see how these are the top layers here. They actually store a lot more details about the image training data set that it was trained on, in case it was a faces. So therefore, our content loss can be defined as the L2 norm, it's a distance metric between the activations and the upper layers of the pre-trained CNN computed versus the target image and the activations of the same layer computed over the generated image. Now, this is a bit much to digest, but you can take a look, read this and take a look and see if you understand it as well. Now, this ensures our generated image retains a similar look to the original images. So effectively, what the content loss function is doing is that it's making sure that the content present to the content image is captured in the generated image. That's all that we're trying to do. So let's talk about style loss now. So while the content loss uses just a single upper layer of the convolution network, so it's the upper layers here, the high level layers, this style layer is composed of multiple layers of the CNN. And why is that? That's because we're now trying to capture the styles from the reference image at all spatial scales extracted by the CNN. So we want all our low level, mid level, and high level details from our reference image. And a reference image is our original artistic styled image that we want to copy onto our image. So now for the style loss, Gattis, who is the original author of the paper, uses something called the gram matrix of a layer's activation still. This is the inner product of the feature maps of the given layer. Now this inner product can be interpreted as representing a map of correlations between the layer features. So now the style loss aims to preserve the internal correlations within these activations of different layers. So now 
a bit confusing to keep track of everything that's going on, especially if you're new to this. But effectively, we do all of this just to ensure that the textures between images look similar. In theory, it actually works quite well, as you'll see in your code shortly. So now we have our content loss and style loss, and we can now use any optimizer to perform gradient descent to now generate our new image. This is it basically written in a formula or mathematical way. Now, this is just a graphical illustration of what's happening during the training process, so where we have our target image here, and we're basically just trying to minimize the content loss and the style loss here that are basically coming out from the content image and the style image, basically using the VGG pre-trained network to extract layers as we specified before. In this representation, the content image is the artistic or the reference image. This is our image that we want to get our style to. So I hope this illustration was at least somewhat helpful in understanding the concept here, where we try to find a balance between loss and style loss, where we're trying to minimize both effectively to generate a perfect target image that is taking the content representation and the style representation of our two images and generating a suitable and appropriate and aesthetic target image. So now let's move into our IPython notebook so we can apply this to some images. So now let's open the file number 21 called Neural Style Transfer. And just in a couple of seconds it comes up and here we go. So now these are the artistic styles, missing a C here. These are the artistic styles that we're going to use to apply to our test images. So let's take a look at the code quickly. Now the code is actually fairly simple. Now I can run through this code before we actually apply it, which may help you. So what we do firstly, we load something called our T7 neural style, well, neural transfer models. These are the models that were trained on each artistic style here so that we can now apply it to our input images. So we have our input images here. We have our Eiffel Tower image that I'm going to test it on. So now what we're doing here, we're just going to loop through each model here each model in the model file paths that it finds here. So we have these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different models that we're going to loop through and apply the artistic style to our Eiffel Tower image. So what we do, we just simply point to the directory that has the original painting that we're going to apply. So that's going to be another folder here. Bring it up for you guys as well. These are the files in the artistic style directory that we're going to use to generate our style. You can see we have these nine paintings, these nine famous paintings here. So firstly, what we do in the code is that we get our neural style transfer model here, just pointing to the path of the model above. And we take the model, actually, we, then we take the image here, we just get a height, width, we get, we resize the image a bit. And then we use something called the blob from image, which you have seen in the previous video, I should say. We take our resized image here and we just set some parameters here, with cropping being full in this one, in this scenario. And then we use this to apply a forward pass, apply this model, the model that we loaded previously here to our image. And then what we do, we just reshape output tensor and by adding back the mean subtraction, reordering the channels that's done here. These are the parameters that we have to use. These are fixed values. And then we just show our style. So it's you know, maybe a bit tad confusing for you guys to understand exactly what's happening here. If you want to learn more about what's happening, what this does, this is how we get our model. This is where we get our image and apply the model to it. And sorry, man, this is where we get the blob and then we apply the model over here. And so you can actually read some of the papers on this, some tutorials online that have more detail. But for now, let's apply this code to our image and using the different autistic styles I listed here and you saw in the Windows File Explorer here. So let's try this out. So there we go. So this is the image here. This is the original image, I should say. This is our original artistic style or reference image. And this is the output. So you can see this is actually quite cool. I actually love how this looks. This, actually, this can actually be an art piece in my, my bedroom or somewhere. Let's take a look at another style. This one, is, it's pretty cool. It's not as cool as the first one, but it is definitely impressive. I think this style here is actually a bit complicated for this model. And maybe probably we need to make some adjustments to get the detail that you see here and apply it appropriately here. But nevertheless, this is still quite cool. This one actually fine works quite well. It's just simple feathers, like hand-drawn shaded feathers here. And you can see it actually looks quite good. It actually picks out blobs here of it, keeping the structure and style of the image intact. But then you see the shape is quite good and it has different emphasis at different points. This is all very impressive. Let's take a look at another one. This one actually I find all this works pretty well. I guess it's because it's actually simple textures involved here and it actually learns different pieces. You can see it uses this artistic style here. You can see it uses the blue on this region here. 
can see it uses the body style here on parts of the tower, so it's quite good. It uses the picture frame or the mirror frame here on other parts here, so I actually love how this looks as well. This one I actually find works impressively well. This is colored window pane here, and you can actually see how it looks. Stained glass is actually the word I was looking for. And you can see it kind of generates this artistic style in the same sort of polygonal alternate colored form. It looks mighty impressive. This actually looks awesome, I should say. Now let's take a look at Starry Night, I believe is the next one. Yes, it is. And this one, again, it is pretty cool. However, I find it maybe they could have had more emphasis maybe using here, here, on this region here. But that's okay. It actually looks quite good as well. There's, there's still too much detail from the original image here for my liking, but it is quite good still. This one, this is a famous picture of the Scream as well, and actually it very much captures the nicely textured areas here from this painting. It doesn't actually look too much like the style, just the color palette is identical, which is awesome. And I think this is the last one here, this is one, the Wave. It looks pretty cool, it's not as cool as I would imagine. I think it's a bit repetitive sometimes with using this pattern in it, but that's okay. And yeah, this is, I think, is the last one here. This actually looks quite good as well. And there we go. So you can see we have ran through all the different models here. And this is a very impressive tool we can use to apply to different styles. So this concludes our lesson here. Uh, the only thing I wanted to add here was take a look at the models here. These T7 models and this function here, you may have noticed read from Torch. OpenCV can now read pre-trained models from PyTorch, from YOLO, and CAFE as well. So OpenCV4 allows some very cool features with using pre-trained models and applying it in Python using OpenCV as well. So this is the last lesson in this course. I really hope you enjoyed this course. Let's do a quick recap on what we've learned in this video. We've learned basically what is neural style transfer, how CNNs learn, and how they visualize their filters, or what they actually see when visualizing their filters. And then we use some of the concepts of content loss and style loss to build a DRAM matrix and then learn how we actually perform neural style transfers. And then we actually use that pre-trained models to apply to our own images in using OpenCV in Python. So now this concludes our course. Now let's take a look at a course recap just to further consolidate the knowledge you've learned in these last few hours of these videos. So firstly, we took a look at some basic computer vision concepts and introduced OpenCV4. Then we saw that using OpenCV4 to do some more image manipulations, things like cropping and scaling and dilation and erosion. Then we started using OpenCV for image segmentation, like contouring. Uh, we actually did edge detection here as well. Just didn't want to leave that out because it's a very important concept. Then we actually used horror cascade classifiers in OpenCV to do some face detection and eye detection and vehicle and pedestrian detection. Then afterward, we started to take a look at machine learning and deep learning in computer vision, where we took a look at how neural networks work and how convolutional neural networks work. And in section five, we took a look at a deeper understanding of CNNs, like how different parameters affect their training times as well. Then we used our own CNN and on our own data to build a gesture recognition system. And then later on, we built our facial recognition system, which was all pretty cool in my opinion. And then afterward, final chapter, we started to take advantage of pre-trained models. So we looked at some pre-trained ImageNet models to do some object classification. And then we took a look at transfer learning using the Safar 10 dataset. And then afterward, we spent a lot of time with building up a theory for object detectors using SSDs, RCNNs, and YOLO. And then we actually applied YOLO and SSDs to some images in Python. And then lastly, we took a look at neural style transfers and we actually implemented our own neural style transfers using OpenCV, some pre-trained model in OpenCV. So I hope this course was very helpful and enlightening in your computer vision knowledge. There are a lot of theoretical details that we may have left out because this is a, such a deep mathematical and in-depth topic. You can spend days and weeks maybe just on one particular area of computer vision, for example, YOLO or SSD. We are researchers that spend basically years of their life in adapting and building upon these concepts. So I don't expect you all to understand all of the mathematical theory, but what's good in this course is that it brought these concepts to you at a very high level. And even better, you are able to implement all of the concepts that we talked about in computer vision in Python using OpenCV4 and TensorFlow and Keras. So what's brilliant about this hands-on course is that you can actually now apply 
so many advanced computer vision concepts to your images or your videos, or even and implement things like your own facial recognition system or train your own convolutional neural networks on your own data. So this is a brilliant course and I really hope you enjoyed it. So I really thank you guys for taking the time to listen to me and listen to my lectures on computer vision. Thank you. So this is the end and congratulations on completing the course. Thank you again.